<laughs> when I'm in power, ladies and gentlemen, my wife, my children, and I do not need to spend one trillion shillings maintaining our presidency. I mean, we will be like we should be like all the presidents that have come before Museven who only budgeted for the office of the president, including state house. I mean, excluding state house. State house, ladies and gentlemen, is just a residence. We should be able to cater for the needs of its occupants besides the guards who are paid by the minister of defense i mean a president earns a salary and that should be enough to take care of his family therefore fellow ugandans remember that by removing that extravagant family from our state house we shall save over 800 billion including the annual supplementary budgets from state house alone that is the much we can save just by removing the dictator. Now, about agriculture, and in particular, coffee. I would like to address the issue of adding value to Uganda's golden bean. And by bean, I mean the coffee bean. Ever since our shadow minister of agriculture, Honorable Abed Wanika, revealed a secret agreement between government of Uganda and the coffee company called Vinci, which is also connected to the fake Lubowa Hospital project, a lot has been established. There's no doubt that establishment of a soluble coffee factory that produces instant coffee like Nescafe is a great achievement the National Development Plan supports the establishment of such a factory. In fact, every Ugandan should be in support of establishing such a factory because, one, it improves the value of some of our country's low-grade coffee beans. Number two, it raises Uganda's competitiveness in the region as a producer and exporter of instant coffee. And number three, it ensures that only premium coffee beans are exported to high-end markets like Starbucks coffee, where the price per kilo is much, much, much higher. So it's a benefit for our people. Unfortunately, in the deal between government of Uganda and Vinci Coffee Company, our country stood to lose instead of gaining and this is because of the following reasons. Reason number one. The factory was not targeting to add value to the low-grade beans. Instead, the agreement ring-fenced the high-value beans usually reserved for brewed coffee, not soluble instant coffee. Now, this means that Vinci, instead of exporting high-value beans unprocessed, by giving all premium beans to Vinci, a monopoly over this cream coffee was created. And this led to directly knocking out other exporters from the business of exporting coffee beans. And this does not make economic sense because premium beans are given only to one company. And in effect, all the current exporters of coffee would eventually be kicked out of business. Number two, globally, instant coffee is produced from low-value coffee beans, while brewed coffee is made from the large premium roasted beans. Now, in the agreement which Parliament has since moved to terminate, Vinci is seen prioritizing beans made for brewed coffee, not instant coffee, which the factory ordinarily meant to produce. There is no single benefit, ladies and gentlemen, and this is one important reason, there is no single benefit that the country would gain from this deal. Yes, coffee export 
revenues would rise and that is only on paper but not in the banks of Uganda. The owners of Vinci have no tax obligations whatsoever. So it makes business sense for Pinetti and her colleagues to basically take away all the revenue for at least 10 years while the same at the same time they are receiving subsidies like electricity charges which is below even the cost price. Number four, Vinci came to Uganda with nothing. The fact that they were given land to establish a factory by government, Vinci, the so-called rich investor, applied for authority to use the same land to acquire a loan and in the typical NRM mafia style. The application was approved by Uganda Investment Authority. And without shame, the Minister of Finance confirmed to Parliament that he signed the agreement without seeing the feasibility study, without a market survey report, or even proof of funding. So in summary, this is just another briefcase investor who is being used by the Museveni Mafia government to do another Lubowa hospital kind of fraud. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, as NUP, we support the establishment of a soluble coffee factory. But a factory that targets adding value to some of our low-value coffee beans, which also brings us profits when we export them. The Uganda Coffee Development Authority should continue supplying coffee seedlings to farmers across the country because you know what? Emwanyi Terimba. In conclusion, fellow Ugandans, today I have just briefly highlighted on some of our pressing issues and how we can deal with them. But I would like to remind you that the dictator is desperately, you know, trying to use all means to hold on to power. He has designed his system to make every one of us a beggar, struggling not to make, not to live better lives, but just for survival. It is therefore the duty of every Ugandan to do whatever you can in your ability to remove the dictator. We intend to continue giving facts to the nation so that all citizens of Uganda can understand and appreciate why we must change the situation and change it very soon. Today, we have picked just a few areas for your information and reflection. And in the coming days, we shall address you, especially on health care, on education, on job creation, on infrastructure, and importantly, on the changing climate. As of now, thank you very much for listening to me, ladies and gentlemen, for God and my country. People power, our power. Our power, people power.